Our reading today is from the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 1, verses 4 to 10. You know those awkward occasions when a volunteer is wanted, perhaps to do something unpalatable or unpopular? There was a scene like this in the Harry Potter films, when the class were introduced to a rather terrifying creature called a hippogriff. And when Hagrid said, who would like to be the first to stroke him? Everyone in the class took a rapid pace backwards. Everyone except Harry, who wasn't quick enough, and who then looked like a willing volunteer who had stepped forwards. The old jokes are the best, aren't they? Still, it paid off in the end, as it proved valuable to have a friend in that flying creature. It was rather like that with Jeremiah, I feel, when God called him as a prophet. Very much, oh no, not me, definitely not. You can't be serious. And Jeremiah spent some time trying to persuade God that this was really a very bad idea indeed. I mean, come on, I'm so young. No one of any mature age would listen to me. And then I'm so nervous and I get this stammer thing when I'm nervous. And how would I know what to say anyway? I don't have anything to say. Well, God cuts through all of the excuses and the avoidance. I knew you before you were born, Jeremiah, in the womb. And this is what I've been preparing you for all along. As for what to say, that's not going to be a problem. The words will come from me. And God touches Jeremiah's mouth in a gentle affirmation, a healing and enabling touch. I have put my words in your mouth, he says. It wasn't the last time that Jeremiah complained about his vocation, but he was faithful to it, despite considerable suffering that came his way as a result. Even Jesus, let's remember, prayed to be allowed to escape his own worst ordeal as he knelt to pray in the garden. This month, we move through Advent and we are preparing ourselves to celebrate the birth from Mary's womb of Jesus, the one with the greatest vocation of all. The birth planned before all times. The one who was with God from the very beginning and will be beyond the end. As we reflect on the babe soon to be placed in the manger, we're struck afresh with the extraordinary paradox of how God works. A newborn, helpless child reveals to us the glory of God, carries in his own self the salvation of the human race. That was some vocation. I wonder if you've had the experience of looking back over your life and beginning to see some sort of pattern or sense or even purpose forming. Not at the time when things happen, we're too close to it then, but usually afterwards. Looking back in retrospect, it can happen that we begin to think, oh right, oh I see, that's what was going on. My call to ordain ministry was a bit like that. It started long before I had any idea what was happening, and apparently random or unconnected events slotted in unexpectedly. Mind you, I ignored it for a long time, or I thought, come on, don't be daft quite like Jeremiah. Every one of us is called by God, regardless of age or background or ability or in whatever way we each might feel inadequate. The only question is, what are we called to do or to be? That is a question we must explore in our prayers. Ask God to answer and discuss with others who know us well and perhaps who might see our gifts more clearly. There are a myriad types of vocations for every stage of life. And God says to each one of us, before you were formed in the womb, I knew you. Do not say I am only, insert your own feelings there, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord.